sit. Okay, today, uh, there's two things that I'm gonna talk about. One of them is uh, looking back through a lot of the YouTube videos that we've done, I discovered that the one that was looked at the most was about whistle stopping, sitting quickly on the whistle, loopy sits. The, the thing that a lot of people seem to have trouble is getting a real nice, crisp, fast whistle sit. You know when you're doing a blind and you blow the whistle and by the time the dog makes a, a big, long, loopy sit, you're, you're in a different position than you thought you were gonna be in. So it's really important to get that real crisp sit. So I'm gonna talk a little bit about that. And the other thing is I wanna sort of ask you a favor. I wanna go, I want you to go to Rumble Bill Hillman and subscribe to Bill Hillman on Rumble. It is, we've been uh, putting YouTube videos, videos on for a very long time and now we're gonna put them on Rumble as well. And there's gonna be some that are only on Rumble. So I want you to do me the favor of subscribing on Rumble. And I'm gonna probably keep talking about that for a while because it's real important to me that Rumble is where you go to find these videos. So. Go to Rumble, Bill Hillman, and then subscribe, subscribe there, and then you'll get a notification when we do a video that is on Rumble. Okay, so now the other topic, which is this quick whistle sit. I've watched this for years, many years, um, and a dog has a slow sit for a number of reasons. Part of it is their timing with the electric collar, which, and I've described this quite a number of times. And <clears throat> let's assume that a dog is way out and you blow the whistle and do a nick with the electric collar simultaneously. Well, that collar nick gets to the dog way before the whistle does. So the timing is it's just a butterfly. Uh, the timing is not right. So um, the other thing is um, sometimes people get and begin to develop a slow sit way out because they've done sit in the yard and they go right from sit real close to sit way out and the dog just isn't ready for that. So one of the first rules is as you begin to teach the whistle sit, you start very close, and then you work your way out. You don't go from point A to point Z on the first day. So do it in increments, 10 yards, 15 yards, 20 yards, 30 yards. Do your wide drills and practice handling on marks there, which is at 30, 40 yards. So the dog really gets the idea of stopping quickly on the whistle. Um, another thing that I'm going to tell you now is what I'm going to call a tip. And it's a little variation on what most people do to teach sit on the whistle. Most people, when they're, let's say they're, you're starting this command with your dog, what they do is, and I'm going to say almost, I'm not going to say 99 I'll probably say 98, maybe 97, maybe 99. I don't know, but it's way up there is what people do. And that is they're walking along and they blow the whistle and then they sort of jerk the lead to get them to sit. So it looks something like this. Okay, whistle, jerk. And then once the collar is being used, it's whistle, nick. Well, 
I hate to say it, but that's not really the right way to do it. It should be done in reverse. Now I'm gonna to try to make this real, as clear as I can, because once you start doing this, your whistle sets are gonna improve like astronomically. Change, blowing the whistle, and then the nick or the jerk on the lead, change that to the jerk comes first, then the whistle. So here's what it should look like. I'm gonna do this three or four times, and, and if, when you start to do it, you'll see an, an immediate change in the response to the whistle that your dog has. So it should be like this. jerk first, then the whistle. Otherwise, you end up, the dog is a little farther away and you're blowing the whistle and then you're waiting for him to sit instead of having the sit first and then the whistle. If, if that doesn't sound right to you, just try it. You'll see an enormous change in the speed of the way your dog sits. So when you're going along and you got your little puppy and I'm walking in circles here, I hope I don't get dizzy. Uh, when you first start, you're gonna, you're gonna just say sit, and you're teaching the sit command. And then you're gonna start using your whistle. And you're sort of doing it simultaneously. But then when, you're, when you've taught the command, in other words, they know the whistle means sit. Now you're trying to make it so it's a faster sit. You want it lickety split. So that's when you start to do the jerk on the lead first, then the whistle. So it looks like this. I'll do it again. Good. That a boy. Do it one more time. Now eventually you're gonna, let's say the dog isn't, I'm trying to get this character so he's not healing. Okay, it's all right, good boy. So he's not healing, he's just walking around and you try to use the element of surprise to help you with a faster whistle sit. So it's something like this. That was a perfect example right there. He wasn't paying attention to me. I did a little jerk and blew the whistle. So it's like, woo! And now they're more aware of sitting fast. So um, I can't emphasize the beauty when you have the ability to put your dog right in a real precarious spot and go tweet and the dog spins and sits right there. Doesn't take another step. That takes practice in close and then practice a little farther away and a little farther away and a little farther away. And then once you get out to a certain distance, don't just keep going until finally they don't sit. Start to move back, like we've talked about in the past, the accordion principle where you go out to a point and then you make it easier again and then go a little farther and then make it easier. Don't get yourself in a predicament where you keep expanding until finally you fail. We don't want to do that. We don't want failure, we want success. So I hope this will help you with a quicker whistle response. And also remember, Rumble, Bill Hillman, subscribe. It would be a big favor to me if you do that. Now hang on, I've got one more message for you coming up right now. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I will not be afraid, for I know you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort and protect me. Thank you.